Hi, it's Dwyer, GamblersAdvisory.com, DwyerVIP.com. Remember, the opinion you should follow should be your own. Just consider this video to be a second opinion from a complete stranger online. You know, just when you think you've seen it all, Las Vegas comes up with yet more ways to take your money. Incredibly, the odds on a draw in the Floyd Mayweather versus Manny Pacquiao fight have now dropped to eight to one, right? The public seems to be confused. The casino, of course, is there to take money from a confused public. No thanks. This is one of the worst props I've come across in recent memory, right? If you're picking a side, I don't mind you paying a little bit extra to get the draw added on to the side, right? Vegas offers bets like that. But if you're just betting on a draw, you're kidding yourself. <clears throat> this is a terrible bet. Manny Pacquiao in his career, unlike most fighters, has actually had a couple of draws. Did you know that Manny Pacquiao has had two draws in 64 fights? Let's do the math. That's one draw every 32 fights. Right? Las Vegas is giving you more than three times worse odds than that. Right? They're, they're going off at 8 to 1 on the draw prop when Manny Pacquiao only gets a draw every 32 fights. Let's think about it in terms of Floyd Mayweather. Right? Mayweather has been in 47 fights. Mayweather has never had a draw. Never. Right? Add the two guys together. 64 plus 47. What is that, 111 fights between the two of them? Two draws, right? Two. So understand, you're overpaid on the draw prop in Vegas, even at the 8 to 1. You're giving the casino your money, <clears throat> and you're not properly getting compensated for the risk, right? The odds should be far longer. We know that just looking at the records of the two guys, right? Folks, just do the math, right? You don't need my opinion. Just look at the records, count the number of draws, look at the fights, give yourself a good shorthand on what the odds should be. Then look at what Vegas is offering you. In my opinion, that's a sucker's play. Let's go one step further. This is a legacy fight, right? You have two guys, two future boxing hall of famers, right? Who want to leave the ring with the crowd. In other words, there's not going to be a guy just hoping to go the distance in this fight. <clears throat> Both guys are going to be in it to win it. They're going to be throwing big shots. There's going to be no place to hide. The hand speed, both sides of the aisle here, the hand speed is exemplary. This isn't the Andy Lee, Peter Quillen fight where those guys, let's just say, don't throw as many punches, certainly not with the speed and velocity of these guys. Right? Understand, if I'm moving away from Peter Quill and I have a chance to go the distance, don't I? Right? It's different here, isn't it? Right? Because here, if I can't handle Manny Pacquiao's hand speed, good luck for me. Right? I'm going to get overwhelmed. The scoring's not going to be close. I can't bluff my way through. Right? Because the hand speed's too dazzling. He's hitting me with a bunch of shots. There's no place to go. There's no place to hide. Understand, Floyd Mayweather also has blinding hand speed. Right? Understand, Mayweather's fights typically aren't close. 
Look at the scoring of his fights. We get excited when a guy gets within three rounds of Floyd Mayweather. That's news. That's big news. A lot of people were excited about Miguel Cotto's performance. It's one of the better performances recently against Mayweather. Look at the scorecards. The scoring's not close. You wonder how bad it is. You have to go back to find a judge in a Mayweather fight who actually picked the other guy. Right? That's the Oscar De La Hoya fight. I know some Canelo fans are going to say, hey, hey, Canelo got a draw on one scorecard. Right? Understand Canelo wasn't close on the other two scorecards. There was no chance of that fight being declared a draw. So what you have here are two guys who, in my opinion, are going to leave it all in the ring. If the fight is close, they're going to go for it. Folks, both of these guys have KO ratios of over 50%. Let me tell you, too, if one cracks the other, there's going to be such a groundswell of emotion that there's no way the other guy is going to go the distance. Just consider the possibilities. Manny Pacquiao, blinding hand speed, comes out. Dex Floyd Mayweather early. Mayweather hits the canvas. Can you imagine the moment? Manny Pacquiao comes back in. Do you think at that point, Manny Pacquiao is going to take his foot off the gas? You think with that crowd being that animated, you think that Manny is going to allow Floyd to just back away and survive? You think Manny's going to let Floyd off the hook? So that Floyd gets back in the fight, back enough to win a decision? Excuse me, in fact, not win a decision, to win a draw. Let's talk about the opposite. Mayweather comes in, drops Pacquiao early. Do you think there's any chance that Pacquiao will be able to get back in the fight? Overwhelm Floyd defensively? Start winning several rounds against Floyd Mayweather? Come on, man. The hand speed, in my opinion, the intensity of the moment, the fact that both guys are greater than 50% knockout artists, the fact that you don't get within the area code on the scorecards of Floyd Mayweather, even in fights where Floyd starts incredibly slow, the Shane Mosley fight. Look at the end of scoring on that fight. Right? Given the fact that both of these guys can hunt you down, right? Are you serious? You're going to try to hide in the ring against Manny Pacquiao? Really? Your legs are going to be allow you to move enough away from Manny Pacquiao where if he hurts you badly, you'll be able to go the distance and win enough rounds to get a draw? It's not going to happen, folks. Let me just say, too, <laughs> you know the odds of a draw are remote. Because between these two guys, more than 100 fights. Collectively, they've only had two draws. So when you're in the sports book and you're looking at all these smiling faces and stuff like that, and you're next to some guy with a big drink who's talking too much and thinks he knows all about the sport of boxing, and he's telling you the play is the 8-1 to one on the draw, you need to view that guy with suspicion. Let's go one step further, and it needs to be mentioned, right? You know, Mayweather's physically bigger than Manny Pacquiao, isn't he? You go back to the first Pacquiao-Marquez fight. That's one of Pacquiao's two draws, right? Understand, that fight wasn't at 147. Understand, Marquez, even his supporters understand. Doesn't have the hand speed of Floyd Mayweather. We know that because Marquez fought Mayweather. We saw the hand speed gap. Right? Now, my point is a simple one. In that fight, Manny Pacquiao was able to knock down a smaller man, right? 
smaller than 147, three times, then got outboxed to the point where that fight was ruled a draw. That's boxing history, folks. That's not my interpretation. That's what the scorecards tell us. Right? Pacquiao's up 10-7 after one round. After 12 rounds, that fight's a draw. Right? Now this is 147. Pacquiao, without those knockdowns, how would he get a draw against one Manuel Marquez? Right? He's now fighting Floyd Mayweather, a guy who beat Marquez, a guy Marquez believes wins this fight on counters. Right? What are the odds of a draw if Mayweather doesn't hit the canvas? That's the question. Right? That's the question. And so to me, the draw prop is a sucker's play unless you're using it as a hedge, which I understand 100%, right? If you're hot and bothered, you believe, you know, uh, one of these two guys, either one is going to win the fight, but then you feel that, you know what, the scoring might be a little bit dodgy in Vegas for whatever reason, and you have a possibility at an 8-1 to one hedge, okay, I understand that. But if your main play is to pick a draw, then quite frankly, you might as well go to the bar and spend your money on alcohol. At least there, you'll be guaranteed the buzz. Anyway, that's how I see it. I don't like the 8-1 to one draw play. Um, if you do, if you think differently, if you feel draws are much more commonplace in boxing, if you feel this fight has the makings of a draw, then I hope you leave those comments in the comment section to this video with the reasons why you believe that's the case. I'll say this, if I'm fighting Peter Quillen after a year layoff, right? A Peter Quillen who wasn't even in sufficient shape to make weight. And I get decked early twice. And I get up and I'm able to kind of, you know, get my wits about me and I'm a better boxer than Peter Quillen, right? If I'm Andy Lee, okay, then I could, you know, somehow finagle a draw out of that. But if Andy Lee were fighting Manny Pacquiao and he got dropped twice early, what chance would he have at a draw? Where's there to hide? Think about the hand speed. Think about Pacquiao's foot speed. Right? This isn't a Peter Quillen situation where I'm dazed and confused off the canvas and I look across and I say, okay, I need to clear my head for a few rounds. Let me go, let me go over here in this corner of the ring and let me clear my head and let me, let me move over there. Let me go clear my head. Uh, let me move over here. Let me go clear my head. Come on. If either of these guys drops you, you're in a whole lot of trouble. Could you imagine being across from Floyd Mayweather and he has dropped you and you have gotten back up? You want to know where you'll end up? The same place Juan Manuel Marquez ended up. On the losing end of a wide decision at a minimum, if not a stoppage. Right? Again, the Diego Corrales fight. I encourage people to look at it. Right? Manny Pacquiao and Floyd Mayweather pose a different challenge than the Peter Quillins and Andy Lees of the world. Right? Those guys are flat-footed and staring at each other for you know long stretches of the fight. Neither Floyd Mayweather nor Manny Pacquiao is flat-footed. Those guys are moving. Right? If one of them blows out the other early, this ain't going to be a draw. That's how I see it. Let me hear from you. Leave your comments for me here online. Visit us at gamblersadvisory.com. I'll say this, right? Because that first Marquez fight fought at a lighter weight class, right, is so vividly in everyone's mind, I believe the casino is taking advantage of the gambler here, right? Draws are rare, so rare. These guys have had over 100 fights and have only had two draws between them. Don't get suckered by an 8-to-1 bet. Because you lose that 8-to-1 bet, you're going to end up with nothing. Let me hear from you. Thanks for stopping by.